Thank you, Kenny. Pinwheels have always been a favorite with children. They're as easy as a breeze to play with. Oh, kids can spin them for hours, all by themselves or with their friends. Well, my double pinwheel quilt is the same way. It's easy as a breeze. It's so easy, it's like child's play. Now, this wall hanging has 11-inch pinwheel blocks made in three fabrics because when you look at the center part of the quilt, you see blue pinwheels. And then the border blocks are mirror image, made at the same time with little red pinwheels right in the corners. Well, it's perfect for a holiday parade. The blocks are made from strips. There's no piecing triangles in this quilt. And then after you've sewn your blocks, there's no squaring up. And while you're making the blocks for the center of the quilt, you are also making the blocks for the border. So they're both done at the same time. Double pinwheel is child's play. So let's give this one a spin. Selecting the fabrics for the double pinwheel is just great fun. Now you could be easy and just pick two fabrics and that'll look very geometric when it's all sewn together. Now this one has blue cloud puffs in the background fabric and then a darker lilac fabric that sets it off. Now once again, it's this mirror image. The one block here in the middle is actually the mirror image of the block that's used in the border. It's beautiful, graphic. Or you might go with three fabrics. Very country French. Trish did this one and she selected it so that she had mainly yellow in the very center of the quilt. And then the mirror image in the border in the blues and selected a very pure white background just to set off all of those fabrics. It would be very relaxing in a bedroom. Sue Bouchard went completely fall. Ooh, oranges, greens, browns. It's wonderful. It's very scrappy. And not only did she use scrappy mediums and darks, but she also selected background fabrics that are all scrappy as well. It's wonderful. Now, mediums and darks, or you might want to select similar value prints as Loretta did. This is the reproduction fabrics that looks wonderful in all the pinks and the blues and peaches. It's great. And then she did that easy diagonal line machine quilting throughout it. Now these are all seven inch blocks. They're the small blocks. But Gail made a large block wall hanging. And it's great, fast and easy to do. She selected, oh, some lollipop prints. <laughs> They're all different colors of stripes and very primary colors. And then the medium, she used cherries. In each one of them, they're a different color. Now, when you take these four fabrics and make four blocks, then you create a secondary pattern right in the center. She turned all those blues right into the middle, and then they worked out from the outside edge. And she did some great machine quilting. Beautiful. Teresa and I were experimenting with fabric, and you know Teresa, she can't let a scrap unsewn. So she took all of those blocks and sewed them together into this charming wall hanging, oh, with all of the beautiful cloud puffs of fabric with the dark lilac pieces sewn together. And when you look at that wall hanging, doesn't it just remind you of an evening sunset with all of those beautiful pastels, pinks, blues? It's wonderful. Now this is a jewel tone pinwheel with the mediums and the darks sewn into one. So that when you look at it, you see the dark pinwheel right here in this block. They're all dark in the center. And then out in the border, you see the medium pinwheel right in the center. When you're working with jewel tones and mediums and darks, be sure to separate them out into two separate stacks. And if you're not exactly sure which stack it goes in, use a ruby bee holder. And just look at your strips through the ruby bee holder because all it does is remove the color and you only see value. And then you might need to mix them up 
change your piles around. Be careful because you don't want to select a fabric like this that is just so light you don't see the pinwheel in the center. And then the bonus of the whole quilt is the four patch because at the end of every strip set for the seven inch block, you can go ahead, sew together four patches and put a lattice stripping in between. It's just wonderful. So let's get our strips cut and start sewing. As I promised, we are stripping today. Now I'm making a three fabric pinwheel and these are my fabrics. I'm using a tone on tone background. My medium is a medium scale print and then my dark is this basket weave. And when you sew these three fabrics together, this is the block that you make. Now the first one is going to have the dark pinwheel right in the middle and the yellow around the outside edge. And then the second block, yellow in the center or the medium, and then the dark or the blue is around the outside edge. Now they all come from two and a half inch strips. Now you could go ahead and just use a regular rotary cutter and a ruler, but do you ever have your cutter just kind of stray away from your ruler? Well, this tool will solve your problem because the cutter is attached right to the ruler. Now I'm going to take the ruler and line it up at two and a half inches and then just pull the cutter back and then just bear down hard and cut away from me. Now it's also great your ruler won't slip on you and just in case you're getting old like I am and you might have arthritis it's easier on your wrist. Then take this strip. Do you ever open it? You've got that dog leg right in the middle. Well, we're going to solve that problem because just take your scissors and cut it right on the fold. I'm going to use half strips for this whole quilt. Now, if you want to do a large block wall hanging, an 11 inch block, you're going to be cutting three and a half inch strips. I'm going to work on a Christmas quilt later. This is my background, this is my medium, and this is my dark. They're all three and a half inch strips. Okay, just let me get this out of the way, make some room, and I'll show you how to line up the strips. Put them first with the cut edge up at the top. Turn all of your strips right side up. The cut edge is up at the top, and then the salvage is always at the bottom. Let me line this up here, like so. Background, medium. Background, dark. And I am ready. Now, using a quarter inch foot, and this one has a bar on it so that whenever the needle goes up and down, the fabric is going to hit right against that bar. It's going to be a perfect quarter of an inch. I've got just a snap-on foot. Let me get that in place, and I'm ready. Okay, take a background and flip it right sides together to a medium. If you're using a computerized sewing machine, you want to set it at 2.0 stitch length or approximately 15 stitches to the inch. And then just go ahead and line up those outside edges. Oh, if your stiletto will help you, that would be great. And just sew those strips right through. I'm going to make a lap rope. So I need to have 24 finished blocks. And to get those 24 finished blocks, you start out with 28 background, and then the medium and the dark are equal numbers. You need to have 14 medium and 14 dark. Okay, now take your background and your dark, flip those right sides together as well. And the block is actually a seven inch block when I'm finished. But if you want to do that large block, need less strips, you need to only have six background strips and then equal numbers, three and three, of the medium and the dark. Oh, this goes so fast and it feels so good. You're going to wonder where all of those triangle P squares are. Okay, once you have your stripping done, you need to do some pressing and it's to the dark side. So whatever piece you want your seam to be behind, just place it on your gridded pressing mat. Oh gosh, I hate those bowed strips. I'm just going to line up my strip with the grid right on the mat, set the seam, use some steam, and then just lift it up and press right into it. Okay, medium. Perfect. Okay, cut is here, salvage is down here. Just slide it along 
whatever fabric you want the seam to go to, put it on the top, set that seam, and just lift up and press right into the seam. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead, sew some more strips, press them, and we'll go on to our blocks. Now consistency is the buzzword for this quilt because you want everything to be done consistently so those pinwheels spin together. Start with this step. Take and line up your strips with the medium and the background, then the dark and the background in this order. Take the first set of strips, line it up on the grid, and then take the second set and just flip it right sides together so that you're actually looking like you're going to make a four patch right here. And then just with your fingers, run it along, lock those seams together. They go in opposite directions. To cut these blocks apart now, you need to have a square up ruler, a six inch square up ruler for the small block. Now a square up ruler always has the one right up in the upper right corner, a diagonal line going right through and squares off of the diagonal. So just take it, line it up on that left edge, square off the left edge, get rid of that, and then place the diagonal line so that you know you have a square. You have the diagonal line in the upper right running straight through to the bottom left. Now, once you have a square, and this one is four and a half inches square, just go right along cutting four and a half inch squares from your strip. Now, when you're doing a small block with half strips, you can actually get four squares out of one half strip, one half of each one of the fabrics. And when you get right down to the end, you have just enough to cut a two and a half inch section for your four patch. Oh, perfect. And then just take this little bit right here and get rid of it. Now, when you're doing a large block and you sew those strips together, they're a little bit wider. They're actually six and a half inches wide. So you need to have a 12 and a half inch square up ruler and line it up. This is the one right up here, the diagonal line going from corner, top right, down to the bottom left, and you're just going to be cutting squares from that. You can only get three large square blocks. Okay, so now we've got these all cut consistently. How about marking consistently? Just take a straight ruler. I'm using a 6 by 12 right now and place it so that it is on the diagonal corner to corner. Now you need to mark consistently from the center out, draw a diagonal line. Well I found that I like to use a permanent marking pen, a felt tip pen. Just start in the middle and then go back to the middle and go the opposite way. This has to be consistent too. Oh I know sometimes you get all mixed up and you start marking them differently. If you leave the whole row out, then you're going to see that you've got every one marked exactly the same consistency. Okay, it's a quarter inch seam right on that line. So let me just move some things aside and I'll start sewing. Okay, when you pick up your piece, you've got this seam right here in the middle. So I always take my thumb on top my finger underneath and just squeeze them together so I lock that seam. Gosh, if you need to, you could go ahead and use, use some pins, but I find that the pins actually distort the work. So right here, I'm going to take my stiletto, hold that seam down, and that black bar is right on the line. So my stitching is one-fourth inch away, and then just pick up the next piece, put that right behind, lock those seams and just hold up that stitch. Now, go down one side, and then at the end, you're just going to turn around and sew up the opposite side so there's actually a half inch of stitching with that line in the middle. Now, what's fun about this technique is that you can do this with any size strips, and it just works out perfectly. Oh, my friend Sue Bouchard loves to do miniatures. Oh, she uses the smallest little strips. Now, she took one inch strips and did the pinwheel. So if you look, you can see the size of the quarter right there. You can see how tiny those pinwheels are. And look 
at the match that she has. Pretty amazing. Um, but you can do it with even wider strips if you'd like. The three and a half inch strips are gonna give larger blocks. Okay, I have already turned the strip around and I am stitching right back on the second side. Hold, this time you're actually not fighting that seam, but just chain them one after the other. You would do a whole big long line if you were doing a large quilt. Oh, one more, let me flip that over. And that is gonna be it. And this is gonna be enough for those two blocks. All right, let's take a look and see. Okay, so this is the stitching right here uh, from one side to the other. You've got quarter inch from the line. You've got a half inch in between. So just take them, line them up, and once again, you're going to be consistent. And so I like to just turn them exactly as I mark them and just cut them on the diagonal line. And as you cut them apart, put them into two separate stacks. I was doing a quilt with Loretta and she didn't tell me that I need to separate them out into those two separate stacks. Oh my gosh, I did not know what I was doing at all. I ended up getting them all mixed up. But you have a larger part of the blue in one stack and then a smaller part of the blue in the second stack. All right, two stacks and now go ahead and take your small trimming scissors and just angle cut very carefully from your stitching up towards the outside edge. Just make a nice little pile of confetti. Actually, I think that if you just stacked up all of these little tips you're cutting off, you could have one great party. Just taking all of this, throwing it away. Okay, that's the one stack. Take this tidy little pile and then go back to the second stack. If you just want to sit right over a wastebasket, just cut off your tips from one side, turn it around, and you actually are trimming off your threads at the same time. Now, we've got to do some pressing. Looks good. Two stacks. Keep them in two stacks. Don't want to get mixed up like I did. Drop them on the pressing mat with the stitching across the top, and then the small triangles are going to just be pointing to the left, both of them pointing to the left. And so just take the one stack and lift the top piece up, press right into the seam. Each one of them, oh my goodness, look at that mat without any pins. That is pretty amazing. This block is basically going to be the blue block. Got see more blue color than any of the other ones. That's the one stack. Now take the second stack, set the seam, just lift up, press into it, oh, amazing. Another good match. So each one of these, you're going to need to have four pieces for each block. And now, the magic is about to begin. I'm gonna take this stack, turn it into the blocks. Okay, just with this one, let's just take the little point in the center, work right off of that point, just turn it around, and we have one beautiful pinwheel. Now the second block, just take the second stack, pretty amazing. Take the second stack, put all of the small points right into the middle, turn it right around there, and we have the second block, and it's all from strips. Let me make some more pieces, and I'll show you how to sew the blocks together. I have this great method for making flat centers, so let me show you how. Now take the block, once you have it laid out, take the row on the right and flip it onto the row on the left. And then you can see that right here, the first seam you're going to match is going in opposite directions, so those are going to lock together right here, right at the tip, opposite directions, they'll lock together, look at this opposite right in there and down here. Truly amazing the way it works. Okay, so just pick up the first piece. I do a lot of feeling with my seams. I feel the seams instead of using pins because I think those pins end up just distorting the whole thing. Okay, right at the first seam, peel it back 
And when you know that they're going to line up, peel them into each other, lock them together, and just hold them tight with your stiletto until you stitch over them. And then the same thing right here. Peel them back. Ooh, let me show you. Like that. And then you just feel along there until those corners match up. Take your stiletto. Gosh, I can't do this without my stiletto. And then needle down would really help. Take this piece right here. And when you see that, you can just roll that right up in there. Match those corners. Lock that together. Then butt right behind the first half. And then one more seam right here. Gonna peel that back and you can pull on one and push on one, whatever, just to make that line up perfectly, line up the outside edges too, and stitch right off the end. Now, I get to take a peek first. Before I show you, I'll decide if I'm gonna show you or not. Don't look yet. Oh, you can see it, it's perfect. Okay, so right here, you can see how they match right here. They're gonna line up one fourth inch in from the end. And that's like that on both sides. And then you flip them right sides together. You'll match this seam. They lock together just as they did before. But this time, the seam right in the center goes up. The seam underneath will naturally fall down. And then this will lock together as well. And to have a really crisp center from the other side, you want your stitching to cross right at this V. So we'll see if I can get that together. Okay, open it up, line up those outside edges. Now, how did you like that method? I didn't do any squaring up on this either. Pretty amazing. Okay, line that up, lock it together, hold it tight. This part right here gets very, very thick. So you want to just peel it back, make sure that you have it. And because it's so thick, be very careful to maintain that quarter of an inch seam allowance as you go across it. Needle down will really help you hold that tight. Line up this next piece, zoom right across there, and that's the sewing. Let's see. One more time, I get the first peek. All right, so you can see it pretty good. Locks right in the middle, meets right in the middle. All of these seams match around the outside edge. Now we want to have a flat center. We don't want to have a bulky center. So from the other side, this is where um, I connected the two halves. There's a straight up and down stitch. So I'm just going to take my scissors and clip those. Let's see if I can get both of the pieces clipped. Okay, just clip right in there. Oh, I've got a little bit more. Yeah, I just want to take out or unsew the straight stitches going up and down. Oh, I still didn't get that cut. There's like this little trick stitch right in there. Okay, pick them out with your stiletto. One side, the flat, the straight up and down. Turn it over on the second side and just pick out those straight stitches. Let me get the stiletto right in there and pull it out and then place it wrong side up. And with your finger, all oh, the word is mush. You're just gonna lay those seams open, mush it right in there. And actually, instead of a double pinwheel, now you have a triple pinwheel. So just take this and the seams will swirl together on the back side. Just place it wrong side up, use a little steam, you can just go right around in a circle around that seam. Just hit it right in the center on the wrong side. And then from the right side, turn it over. Give it some steam. So, that's looking good. I'll even let you take a close look. So you can see that matches perfectly right in the middle. Swirls around flat as can be. So, I've done two blocks. The same size, flat in the center. So now you go for a spin. <laughs>